Hi, welcome back. And if it's your first time here, welcome to the channel. My name's Clive, and you'll probably get to meet the potty-mouthed wife Mandy at some point in this video or in a subsequent video. If it's your first time here, have a look up here somewhere. There'll be a card that will link you to our solar panel playlist. Let's get into it. So it's been a month since we pulled the plug on the utility company and went off-grid officially. How did we do? Wasn't all peaches and roses, I'll just say that. Uh, stick around to the end and I'll give you a breakdown of uh, what we encountered in our first month of going fully off-grid. So I figured it might be useful to some of you out there to actually know what we can actually run on our 8 kilowatt off-grid solar power system. We have a pellet-fired boiler which we use for the hot water for the two homes as well as for underfloor heating. Uh, this winter we won't be running the underfloor heating with pellets having doubled in price over last year. I have to point out that while we're off-grid, we're not living like the majority of people that are off-grid live. We have, I don't know how else to say it, but just normal houses with flushing toilets, electric ovens, electric hobs, just standard modern homes. Um, and we run everything off our system. The way we manage this is by carefully monitoring the usage and uh, making sure that we stick to usage patterns. The only time we've had trips is essentially either when I've forgotten I've got the spa running and the pool pump and the borehole pump not leaving enough bandwidth for mom or Mandy to put, uh, put on the toaster or the kettle even. So that's primarily when it trips when we're not managing the load uh, sufficiently. On a typical summer's day with a borehole pump running which draws three kilowatts and the pool pump running in the household sort of steady draw, we draw drawing about 4.2 to 4.4 kilowatts for six and a half hours of the day each day in summer. Now this excludes any other current draw that might be taking place during the normal course of the day. Mom making lunch, Mandy baking bread, me cutting wood in the wood shop, or welding in the garage, whatever. Uh, despite that, we're able to get the batteries back up to full charge before the sun sets. Uh, we also run two households here. Mom has her own little place next to our place, and that's what we feed. The houses are full of appliances, full of electrical gadgets, TVs everywhere, um, washing machine, dishwasher, tumble dryer, oven, hob, microwave, standard household equipment and we managed to run it fine on our 8 kilowatt system. As I say, we don't do washing at night for obvious reasons and the dishwasher doesn't run through the night either. We'll wait for the sun to be up so we can get free energy and not rely on uh, the battery power. Mom's kitchen, two plate hob, induction hob, washing machine, oven, tumble dryer and a double door fridge, fridge freezer over here. And that's our kitchen. Aircon, fridge freezer, oven, microwave, hob and dishwasher washing machine tumble dryer in the laundry room. Many years ago in Scotland the utility company sent us an energy monitoring meter which at the time we thought was great. Well I did, the family hated it because I used to chase everybody to go and switch off computers and xboxes and you name it. But it actually gave me a very good idea of what energy consumption actually adds up and hits your bill. The first thing I did was change the 50 watt halogen light bulbs on the kids landing and the four in their bathroom. That halved my electricity bill in the first month by going from halogen to LED. And my blood pressure probably dropped a few notches as a result as well because I didn't have to go and moan at the kids every time they left the light on. I almost didn't care. Just goes to show how much kids actually do cost you. So you can imagine it was a big race thereafter to get every single halogen bulb in the house replaced with LEDs. When we were buying all of the appliances for the homes here, we made sure 
that all electrical appliances were A++ rated at a, at a minimum. <laughs> the higher energy rating we could get, the better. I've had a couple of comments uh, querying the efficiency of hanging solar panels vertically on the back of the garage. Where we are in the winter months, the sun is very low to the horizon pretty much throughout the whole day. So they're actually almost as efficient, if not more efficient, than the panels that are lying on the roof. From about 10 a.m. in the morning right through until about, at this stage, half past three in the afternoon, they're generating between 1,200 and 1,500 watts, which is perfect for a two kilowatt um, array. I'm quite happy with that. We've also given the mulberry tree a haircut because it was getting some shading on the panels in the early morning and late afternoon, but that's sorted now. Okay, so it's midday, 12 noon. All panels are fully in sun, both on the roof and on the back of the garage. Let's go and see what we're generating. So midday, inverter B, we're generating 1.73 kilowatts. And inverter A is generating 1.86 kilowatts. Two kilowatts generating 11.53 watts. Two kilowatt panel array on the back of the garage is generating 1153 watts, which is more than half of what its total capacity is, whereas the two strings of four kilowatts on the roof are each generating less than two, ki two kilowatts, so they're generating less than half. Therefore, vertical panels are more efficient at this time of year in this location. Turns out, those calculations on the back of the fag packet could be wrong. I've just realized the panels on the roof are overdue for a clean, so that could be affecting it. So I'll have to do the test again tomorrow at midday and we'll compare the uh, results. Okay, it's going to be windy. I'm up on the roof. Looks like the panels can do with a clean. They're not as dirty as I thought they were. But that's definitely going to be affecting the readings we take. So I'm going to give them a clean and then at midday we'll go and do the same test again. are all clean now we'll just wait until midday so I can go and do the same test we did yesterday and compare the vertical generation versus the ones lying horizontal on the roof should be interesting okay so it's midday as you can probably see the conditions are totally different to yesterday this is what I recall to as a I don't know a white overcast Let's go and see what we're generating after cleaning the panels on the roof and do a comparison again. So inverter B is doing 685 watts, 690, let's call it 690. Inverter A doing 721. I can't see what it's doing. <sighs> okay, that's going to require some maths to work out. Not as easy, it would have been easier if it had been sunny just like it was yesterday. So how did we fare on our first month officially off grid? Everything was going great until it wasn't. On the 9th of October we woke up to cloudy conditions and in fact it rained most of the 9th, meaning we didn't get full charge into the batteries uh, before sunset. Uh, we got through the night but woke up in the morning and the batteries were sitting at around about 48%. So the generator went on for an hour. Uh, you'll see the breakdown over here. We ran the generator for four, four days, uh, a total of 10 hours I think. And since then we haven't had to rely on the generator at all. We've had pretty much sunny days all day, every day. 
I have found that when we have a dark overcast, like what I refer to in the spreadsheet as black overcast, we battle to maintain our sort of daily draw, never mind put charge into the batteries. When it's cloudy and overcast, but it's not black, it's sort of a white overcast, we're able to get the batteries, if not fully charged, charged enough to get us through the night. I do expect to be using the generator more often as we get deeper into winter, but that just all depends on how many dark days we have in a row, etc. Time will tell, I'll keep you updated. Once again, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and we hope to see you again next week. See, normal kitchen. I've done it. Mm. <laughs> Is that it? Just kidding.